Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, guys. Uh, this is your sister Naima B. Robert here, and um, this is a live broadcast from StreamYard. And uh, we are testing something. I'm hoping, inshallah, it will work. Um, if you can hear me, just let me know in the comments if you can hear me, if you can see me, if everything is working from your end because you know how things go with uh, my <laughs> connection sometimes. So inshallah, inshallah, uh, we, are, we said that we were going to do a live reaction to one of my one of my most famous videos. Hajra says, I sound amazing. Jazakallah khairan sis. I'm very pleased to hear this. May Allah make it continue. Ameen. Alhamdulillah, everyone can hear me. This is great. Okay, so we're getting techie with it. We're getting techie with it today. We are, guys, make sure that you give this a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 40,000 um, subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. And today I'm going to be doing a reaction to, as I said, one of my most infamous and famous uh, videos. It was a rant and it was, uh, a, there were actually three videos in this rant and they were all about, um, it was basically me expressing my views on the way that single mothers and divorcees are seen in the community and just approaches to marriage and stuff like that. Now, if you've been following my content, then you know that my views have changed somewhat on certain things. I've been called some very interesting names in the past few days, the past few weeks, past few months. Uh, I think the latest one on my comments was that I'm a misogynist and that I have no compassion. Uh, people have called me a pick me, people have called me all sorts of names, uh, toxic, uh, anti this, phobic that, all sorts of things. So um, I wanted to uh, get on and re-watch those videos and see and to share with you guys what I still think is valid and maybe certain points that need to be explained uh, and then others that I actually do not agree with anymore and that my views have changed on, right? So guys, if that sounds good to you, inshallah, just give me a thumbs up, okay? And invite anybody that you want to this, inshallah. I am going to set up this. As I said, it's my first time doing it. I'm supposed to be having a guest coming on to join me as well. Secret guest, surprise guest. But hey, we'll take it one step at a time, inshallah. Uh, let me know first and foremost if you've actually seen those videos uh, and if you know the ones that I'm talking about. The one we're going to look at today is Sisters Raise Your Standards. Uh, there is another one as well on um, Sisters Do You Really Need a Man? That's the one that got the brothers triggered for sure. Uh, and then there's another one just wrapping everything up inshallah. So let me get that set up. You guys can like share this video if you want, call some other people into the room. Let me get this set up for us now, inshallah. Right, guys, can you see? <laughs> can you see? Now, Sister Hajra says, have, if you have a moment, can you give a short summary of how your viewpoints have changed? Now, I will actually have to go back. Um, <laughs> I, I'll have to go back. I want to watch the videos again because I actually don't remember everything that I said. So that's part of the reason why we, we're doing this, uh, this reaction. Uh, so yes, thank you. I did say I was going to do this um, a while back now, um, but I've been scared of the... Um, scared of the, the 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 tech side of things um, because it is a bit fiddly when you've got a video and I know some people mashallah they, they do this all day every day uh, you know watching a video and then kind of commenting on it I've not done it before so it's a, it's a bit it's a bit uh, daunting but alhamdulillah thank you so much for your interest in it and um, like I said I don't remember everything I said so some things I'll probably be cringing other things I'll be co-signing and other things I'll be saying, astaghfirullah. So let's see how it goes. I do believe that my um, my secret guest, my co-host is, is inshallah signing in. So once the brother's here, then we'll be able to go it. Uh, King Sultan says, this is Sister Naima from the past. Yes, I know people make a lot of assumptions about that Sister Naima actually. Uh, and I think that people maybe judged me 
in a particular way, one of the most common comments on these three videos is brothers saying, single sisters keep other sisters single, right? Or saying that I'm a bitter divorcee, why am I putting my bitterness out into the world? And I'll tell you guys a, a secret. I was not single when I made these videos, okay? I was not a divorcee when I made these videos. So just know that these videos were not coming from a place of pain on my part or, you know, like I wasn't in any kind of difficult situation. I was actually married at the time. So that's the first thing that I want to debunk. Uh, but I, like I said, uh, you know, I, we're going to go through it all, inshallah. And I love the fact that you guys are here and that I can see your comments uh, because it means that we can actually have a dialogue. So just make dua that my guest is able to sign in with no problems and that we have no issues with the stream. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that we can that we can make this happen, inshallah. So first and foremost, off the bat, um, two of the titles, I think, definitely got people's backs up to the point that I don't think they even watched the videos. They just saw the title and they were like, oh. So sisters, raise your standards. Let me know in the chat what that says to you. When you hear sisters, raise your standards. Do you think, yes, exactly. As somebody did say that actually. They said, you know, um, yeah, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be with losers. So that's one reaction. Other people have a more negative reaction to being sisters being told to raise their standards. So let me know in the chat where you stand on it. And then the other video, I have to say, I was being a bit naughty. There was a bit of clickbait going on because I entitled it, I titled it, Sisters, Do You Really Need a Man? And the brothers did not like that at all. No, no, they did not like that at all. And I think that many of the brothers who commented on that video, don't. I don't think they even watched the video. They just saw, oh, Great. So now Sister Naima B. Robert is telling the sisters that they don't need no man. Right. So she's one of those people. Right. So, yes. <laughs> um, let me know in the chat what uh, what that what that came across to you. Yvonne says to me, it means self-confidence. Know your values and learn to set boundaries. OK. King says, I'm not going to lie. It sounds a bit feminist, but we shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Exactly. OK, so keep it coming, guys. Tell me your thoughts. Tell me your visceral response to that title uh, and then we'll take it from there inshallah and yes please do click the like button okay so you can support the channel if you're not a subscriber what are you waiting for subhanallah guys i want to tell you while i'm waiting for my guests to come in i'm so sorry malish we've had some some scheduling issues today however i did a an interview with baba ali another one um and i'll be releasing it next week inshallah so definitely you want to look out for that but he said something to me at the end of that interview that was so, so moving and so surprising. I did not expect it at all. And, you know, he said at the end of the, the conversation, you'll see it on the, on the video. At the end of the podcast, he said, you know, I want to say this before we end up that, you know, people have been talking to me about your platform. They've been talking to me about this channel. I've heard more about this channel and the conversations that you're having on this channel than I have anywhere else for the past couple of months. SubhanAllah. And he said, brothers and sisters, just I've just been hearing about these conversations that you guys are having. SubhanAllah. Al now, I'm sure you guys know that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to use you to benefit the people, this is, wallahi, is one of the, the biggest honors in, in, this, in this world, right? And that's what we pray for, right? We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use us to benefit the people. Uh, and I pray, inshallah, that the conversations we have on this platform are beneficial, right? That they, that they, that they help, that they guide, that they inspire, that they motivate, that they teach. Um, you know, I'm not here just like just to run my mouth off, you know, just so we can what, get some ad dollars. Like, that's not what this is about. This is part of Sadaqa Jariya for me and for everybody else that I involve on this platform. So those of you who've been here from the beginning, those of you who are supporters of the channel, I thank you 
And I appreciate every single one of you that has shared a video, that has commented on the video, that has told others about it. And I guess more importantly, taken something that they've heard on this channel and applied it in their lives, subhanAllah, because this is, this is why we do this work. This is why we do this work. So let's get to it, inshallah. Let's see if uh, we can add um, my uh, co-host to the stream. Uh, let me know. Just give me a thumbs up when you're ready, inshallah. Sister Yvonne says that the title says to her, knowing your worth and not being undermined. Also aiming high and allowing yourself to aim high and being worthy of the best of the best. Ah, I love this. Okay, this is going to be so interesting. So um, I want to let I want to see if anybody can guess who my mystery guest is that I'm going to add to the stream now. Uh, just post in the chat if you can guess who is going to be joining me for this reaction. Uh, I would love to see who you think is going to be joining um, and maybe doing some cooking and some challenging and some, you know, feet to the fire type of work. Let me know in the chat if you can think who it might be. Um, but yes, I just want to say that. I want to say I appreciate every single one of you. Um, I thank you for being here, for being a part of this. And it's an honor, really, um, if people are benefiting from the channel, benefiting from these conversations. And of course, all my wonderful guests who come and they give, you know, all their, their heart and their, and their, and their knowledge and their, 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 their time so that we can benefit, you know. And subhanAllah, just with the marriage conversation alone, we're talking something like 800,000 views or something like this, something mad, something mad. So let's see. Um, it looks like the camera has stalled there. Oh no, there it is. Salaamu Alaikum. Right, I need to make sure your mic is on and I'm not hearing you at the moment. Guys, let me know if you can hear uh, Brother Nasir. The guesses were that it was Mahdi joining me tonight. No, not Mahdi. Uh, sister said, is it Layin Kasani? Well, obviously it's not Layin Kasani, mashallah. Uh, not Yasmin Mujahid either, not Muhammad Hijab. It's Brother Nasir, mashallah. Brother Nasir, can you hear me? I can't hear you though. Guys, can you hear him? Because I can't hear him. Let me know in the chat. They're very active in the chat tonight, mashallah. We've got a lovely, a lovely group of people in here. But uh, yeah, you're, I'm not hearing you. Um, nope. No, they can't hear you either. Okay, so it's not just me this time, alhamdulillah. All right, guys, like I said, let's uh, remember what I said, which is that we're going to have... Um, we're going to have uh, teething problems because it's our first time. So, uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, Brother Nasir, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the stream. Uh, just keep testing your mic. Uh, and then once, you're, once you are, you know, once we can hear you, then I'll, I'll put you back on the screen. Okay, alhamdulillah. So, nice guesses, guys. Good guesses. Uh, none of these people at the moment, except for Layin Kasani, are booked to come onto the platform. But who knows, right? Who knows? which doors Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open uh, for us to be able to have some good conversations, mashallah. Uh, Fruk Silky says, I appreciate the awareness you are trying to create regarding the topics you delve into on this channel. Refinement and reflection of opinions and morals are being created and challenged. Allahu Akbar. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate all of you on here. Um, thank you so much. You know, these... These types of topics, it can be really easy for us to kind of either have a very kind of dry, informal, scholarly approach, which is which is great for the people of knowledge who are able to carry those types of those those kind of that kind of discourse. Um, and when we are talking with you know a large variety of people, it can be difficult, you know, to uh, to get um, to get the right amount of kind of personality and gravitas, seriousness. So I pray that we strike the balance. How are we doing, brother? Can you hear me? You tell me, can you hear me? Oh, yes, we can. Very, very yeah. much so, mashallah. Excellent. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Now, last time we did a show, the, the viewers complained. And you know why they complained? They complained. Something, yeah. <laughs> they complained that your mic was much louder than mine. 
So guys, let me know in the chat if our levels are out of sync. Is Brother Nasir much louder than I am? Do I need to increase my volume? Talk to me because we want to go into this reaction, guys. Yeah, just let me know if our levels are okay. Testing, testing on my side. What about you, brother? You're good. You're good for, for me. I can hear you very good. Okay, good. It clear. Sounds severe. Crystal clear. Okay, so we've got a video. I'm hoping it's going to work, inshallah. So that's it. We're going to start with advice to my sisters. Raise your standards. Guys, if you can't hear the brother or me, and if our levels are off, speak now or forever hold your peace. Yvonne says, I'm a little quieter, but it's fine, of course, because I'm the sister. <laughs> Shaista says, slightly louder brother. And Adol says, it's perfect. So it's the three the three bears, I guess. Alhamdulillah. So, so quick question. Quick question. Since this is our first reaction on the Candid Conversation show, mm -hmm. uh, how do you want to do this? Do I ask you to pause when yeah. I have something? What, what, what are we going to yeah, do? Yeah. Let's do that. Let's definitely do that, inshallah. Yeah, so we'll watch and, you know, just shout out. <laughs> I'll pause as well when, when I, when I want to say something. But if you have something to say, just like interject and I will, um, I will. Uh, yeah, Boro says the brother's mic is slightly louder. That's fine because he's a man. Exactly, in it? But also the fact that your mic is much better than mine. <laughs> so, yes, please hit the like button, guys. Let's, 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 let's move. Let's do this. Okay, let's see. Bismillah. With freedom from the situation that she's in, right. it happened. Okay. Juma, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with all the blessings of yes. this day. Can you hear? Now y'all know, unfortunately, I very rarely get on Instagram or Facebook live when something hasn't happened. Like okay. And like yes. I First of all, yeah. I can tell in your tone, that you're ready to come with the smoke. I don't know what you're going to say. I haven't seen this. So this is a note for sisters because this has come up in the live that I was just on in terms of how you approach your husband, how you approach a man. And we've discussed this on the show. This right here, exhibit A of not the tone you use when you approach your husband. <laughs> Proceed. Okay. Take notes, guys. Okay, take notes because we're going to be coming at this from all of the angles. It is true. I was ready to to I, I was ready to bring the smoke. I was ready to come with it, as you guys yeah. know. And you've seen the videos, right? And I already uh, prefaced this by letting people know that I was married at the time of this filming. Okay, so I was not the divorcee that I was talking about, and I was not the single mom that I was talking about. So it was not coming from a place of personal pain or bitterness. Just mm -hmm. everyone needs to know the context. Okay, I just like wanted to come on here because I just received a message that really, really upset me from a sister. And I'm not going to go into the details uh, of her message. It's to do with her marriage, etc. Okay, and I ask right now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her with um with healing and with freedom from the situation that she's in in the very best way okay i mean for all of you i mean you now, see i was being good i want to I say something no, 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 and no. this is a message it's to everybody out there i know most of you What's all, wrong? Of this, all of the all of this sisters exhibit b all of this this hand motion all this just just again when you're about to approach your husband and you have a valid concern, and I'm sure you got one, got off the phone with the, with the sister about her. I'm sure this is valid. There's a reason. Righteousness is behind this. Mm. But we can tell already as a man, the tone, the, 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 all of this. Yeah. The three, the three tugs on in the car. See, that's like the equivalent. <laughs> In the states, we got this thing like in, in in some neighborhoods. You know, when the sister pull out the Vaseline, take off the earrings, that's when you know it's about to be on and popping. The smoke is about to come. Yeah. So when there's like the little three tugs on in the cob, that's when you know the sister under it is about to give you that business. See. Okay. So exhibit C. Don't do the three tugs before Full you talk. Forewarned. Forewarned. Okay. Forewarned. Let's go. You guys all will be sisters. 
is. But the brothers as well, I know that you come up on here. I know you creep up on here and I know that you listen to my rants. So I'm going to address you as well. But this is specifically for sisters who find themselves in a situation. And I have talked about this before, but sisters who find themselves in a situation where they are being disrespected, where they are being humiliated on a regular basis, where they are being abused. Okay. I really. Oh. When the ads <laughs> the ads interrupt the stream. Oh whoa. Oh sorry about this guys. Manish. I really at the moment I really don't have it in me to kind of bring it because I'm kind of tired. Okay, I'm tired. But I'm not too tired to tell you something very, very important. And I want you to take this message and I don't want you to get all inspired and all hyped up and, oh, wow, Sister Naima really brought it. Yeah, she told them and all of that stuff. I'm not interested in that, okay? Because at the end of the day, hype is cheap, okay? Hype is cheap. What we want, guys, is transformation, what we want is change. What we want is progress, evolution, growth. That is what we want, okay? Not hype. So when I say this to you, I really want you to listen with your ears, let it go into your brain and listen with your heart, okay? Please guys, ladies in particular, set a standard for yourself. Set a standard. That standard is what you are willing to accept. That's what I said. What you are willing to accept, okay? You want people to treat you better? Raise your standard. People will, unfortunately, human beings are like this. They will treat you as badly as you allow them to treat you. Once you stop allowing them to treat you in that way, they will stop doing it because they realize that, oh, this is not working anymore. This is not, this is not kind of, this is not happening anymore. This is, she's not available for this anymore. And listen to me, I'm so sorry. And the reason I'm so upset about this and, you oh, know, and, and the reason I'm so upset about this is because I have had too many messages from sisters. Well, Lahi, it breaks my heart. Too many messages from sisters whose husbands have treated them like trash and continue to treat them like trash again and again and again. They have a baby for him. He treats them like trash. They have baby number two. He's still treating them like trash. He gets wife number two, still treating them like trash. Baby number three, treat them like trash. Divorce you. Yeah. Then in your id, they take you back, still treat you like trash. And you keep being available for his BS. You keep begging for it. You keep accepting it. You keep apologizing. You keep accommodating. You keep enabling. What the hey? Why would he change? I have sisters who come on and they say things like, I, I, I hope that he would change. I hope that he would become a good man. He's not a good man. He's an idiot. Whoa. Or a narcissist. Whoa, 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 or hurting whoa, whoa, whoa. himself. Whoa, he whoa, probably whoa. has his own. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ooh, okay, wait, wait, wait. wait. Can we pause? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Whoo. Whoa, whoa. Wow. 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 Can I have some water, please? Can you give me some water, please? I need some water. I need some air. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, I'd like I told you. I'm speechless. Please, water, we need it. Whew. Whenever there's three tugs, there's, you know, sister's about to go in. Um, so this a, a lot to unpack. One, the idiot, right? The, the labeling is problematic. Always remember that, you know, for both brothers and sisters. 
whenever you default to labeling someone, whether it be jerk, it is uh, a real man or whatever it may be, it's not constructive for yourself and it's also not constructive for the person that you want to change, right? Because you're, you're technically not giving them anything to work on, right? So that's just a side note for you to remember. So it's better for you to describe what is problematic, right? That you want that person to change or oh, his communication style is, 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 is problematic. Uh, the way he, um, uh, his, his lack of availability for me and the kids is problematic. Be particular about what it is that's problematic. And the other problem with labeling is it's just not accurate. Right? Like the reality is there's some things that men and women do well, and there's some things that they don't do well. Right. And so you want to be specific about what it is problematic, especially if you're in a situation that you want it to get better. Um, and it's important not to be labeling self or someone else, because if you get in the habit of labeling, you're more than likely to do it on yourself when you don't live up to whatever standard you have for yourself. And if you do it with yourself, you're more than likely to also slip up when you're angry and direct that towards your husband in a moment of anger. So that that's one thing that comes to mind. And if I can, the other thing that comes to mind is if we're going to be fair, although I don't like labeling, what is the label I would ask this version of the older Naima, what is the label she would assign to a sister that continually goes back, makes herself, as you say, available to this type of man? What is the label you would ascribe to her? Or would you even ascribe a label to her? Would there, would there be any accountability to her? Okay, so the first thing I wanna say is, well, that was a lot. That was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. Um, it's been a long time since I've been that emotionally invested uh, to have that type of response. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the theme of these three videos that was lost on people was that the message was for the sisters, right? In this case, my contention was that don't complain about it because you allow it. If you want it to stop, you have to stop allowing it. That is you. That is your work, right? To raise your standard, to understand what you will accept and what you won't, what you will tolerate and what you want. That is you. That is your work, right? And if you've not done that and you're being disrespected and mistreated, don't blame the other person because you've allowed it, right? Now, you know, rights and wrongs uh, and the wherewithals, um, the typification. And I think this, this for me is, is very much the kind of energy that is easy to, to, to bring forth when you only hear the sister side of the story and you hear maybe lots of sisters talking about stuff, yeah, that they've, that they've, been, that they've been going through, right? Sisters are probably more likely to reach out and and say sister this is what's happening with me you know this is what i'm going through my husband this my husband that right sisters we know yeah we, we be doing that so if you hear that a lot and you never listen to or hear anything from the brother's side this is the energy that it creates it is a, a world view that is is skewed towards the sisters where in which the sisters are always the victims the sisters are always the ones, you know, getting the short end of the stick. The sisters are always the ones in pain and the brothers are just living their best lives out here. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, the biggest growth or the biggest change, I would say, and maybe somebody mentioned in the comments that I'm a more laid back now than I was then. And I think one of the reasons is that when you are able, or when you've been given the opportunity to step back and see and hear things from one gender's point of view and also see and hear things from the other side. And sometimes it's the same situation, but from both sides, you realize actually 
there's mistakes on both sides, right? There's there's weaknesses on both sides. There's mistakes on both sides. Sometimes there's more on this side. Even the one who says she's a victim, she is actually creating the situation. And then sometimes it's the, the man who's creating the situation due to his own weaknesses, right? Mm -hmm. But the point is, for me, as you know, I see myself as more so an elder in the community now, right? Where I have to look at things for the sake of the community. So I am not for the sisters. I'm not for the brothers. I'm for the families. I'm for the community, right? Uh, and I think for many of us, especially as sisters, and brothers probably have the same thing as well because they don't necessarily, no, 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 actually that's not true. That's not true. I was gonna say that brothers are typically pro-brothers and will usually come at things from the brother's point of view, but I don't think that that's the case, is it? What, what do you think no. about that? No, no, no. We, we, we unfortunately have a lot of brothers do have, that have the white knight mindset, right? That, um, you know, as we've discussed before, and I've brought it up so many times before, and we can ask the chat and people in the comments can, can answer this. How many times have you heard someone say, that a woman, because of how she's acting, is not being a woman, she's being a girl. How often do you hear that? Versus how often do you hear that a man is not being a real man or a man is being a boy because of how he's acting, right? The areas in which he's fallen short, his fallibility, right? And so that that leads into that reality of, of the burden, the accountability is solely oftentimes placed on uh, the man, right? She has no accountability. If he was just a better man. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. If he was a real man, mm. then we wouldn't have all these problems. And it's, it's not, I think it's not just that the he would be a real man. I think, again, again, the whole point of this series was Sisters, stop blaming other people for your problems. Take accountability in, in, in what your part is in this whole thing, right? Um, SubhanAllah. And, you know, Sister uh, Miss Chameli's cooking. Thank you very much. She says, kudos to Sister Naima for being out here and acknowledging your past slip-ups. May Allah bless you because your intentions were always good. And it's, you know, for sure, in that when, when you're in that headspace where you only hear the sister's side of things, you really do develop a worldview in which women good, men bad, sisters good, brothers bad, sisters victims, brothers perpetrators, right? And it really is only when you start to listen to the other side that you realize, hold on a minute, we're just humans out here, right? Flawed, fallible, making mistakes, messing up, trying to figure it out, um, you know, um, and uh, yeah, you, it's, it's difficult to say it's always these ones or it's always those ones because it just isn't always and every situation is co-created, right? But anyway, can, shall we go back to the video? Yeah, have yeah. We, have we calmed down enough? I've calmed down enough. Yeah. I'm ready to continue. Oh, my goodness. All right, guys, let me know in the chat if you're ready. Give me a yes in the chat if you're ready for us to continue, inshallah. Let's go. Bismillah. I, one thing, though. Oh, issues that you don't. Okay, I'm still cooking. I'm still cooking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, just keep keep three tugs. Yeah. Whenever you yeah. three tugs, you about to go in. Yeah. Right. Okay. This minute, let's go. Don't even know about. And he's simply taking them out on you. And here you are, little miss wanting to be a good wife and a good mother and all of that stuff, making yourself available to be treated worse than a prostitute on the street. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. 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 <laughs> oh God, no! What happened there? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, ads coming up. Whoa, is it? Whoa. I, uh, okay, Worst I don't know where that possible. came from. <laughs> can we go back? Okay, okay. Let, let, um, let's see if we can go back without the ad playing again. Yeah, you can. Once it plays, you're good. Let's see. Whoa. Oh, sorry. You were mute. Yeah. know about. And he's simply... Okay. Ooh, the hands going and everything. He's oh, like, yeah. I, I, I hope that he would change. I hope that he would become a good man. He's not a good man. He's an idiot. Or a narcissist, Ooh, the narcissist or hurting himself. 
He probably has his own issues that you don't even know about, and he's simply taking them out on you. But that's and here you point, are, little wait miss, minute, wanting to be a, a good minute. wife and a good okay, mother. Okay, hold on, sis. Hold it up. Hold it up. I think that's a valid point. That is a valid point. Forget the narcissist, guys, please. Okay, I apologize, Manish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't want to be going in with that. But the, 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 what I mentioned there about your husband dealing with stuff that you've got no idea about, right? Working through things that you've got no idea about. You've got, like, you don't know what's going on with him and he's taking it out on you. I think that was a moment of, can I say compassion for the husband? That he's just, you know, he's acting from what he well, knows and what he's dealing with. That was, he's an idiot. That, was, you know, <laughs> like, that was sandwiched in between idiot and narcissist. I mean. Okay, like, okay, never mind. Never because mind, never mind. Is, right now, when you paused it to say, well, that was a good point, I actually didn't know the point that you were going to allude to uh -huh. because I was caught up on the narcissist bomb that you dropped, right? Like, like that's a that's and again, you know, exhibit C or whatever number we're on, sisters takeaway. This is one yeah. of the reasons why labels are not important. I mean, are important, why you should not engage in labeling self of others is because it distracts from the valid point that you want to raise. It's that it's that reality that we know of in terms of the delivery can distract from the, yeah. the message. Yeah. And that's why it's important to know how to regulate, to understand and regulate your emotions so yeah. that when you do articulate the valid points, you're in the best space mentally and emotionally, right? To not only articulate the issue, but to potentially influence the change you want yeah. in your husband. Yes. And we talk about this on Candid Conversations, guys, so don't miss an episode but, of that, please. One Let's, point. Yeah, one, we're going to go point. to the prostitute side of things now. Uh, on the prostitute aspect. Wait, let's hear it. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Let's let's hear the full thing. Let's hear the sister out, okay? <laughs> Maybe uh, it's not as bad before, as it seems. Before we hear the sister out, let's take a pause. One minute. I need my charger. Oh yeah, please get that then, inshallah. Yes, and Hajra, yes. Uh astaghfirullah was needed as a reaction. Uh to that. Wow. Like I said, guys, I this was Can you take me off? Or do I uh, yeah, you can just jump off. Uh, 2019, guys, a uh, long time ago. Um, and lots has happened since then. And uh, I don't, I haven't watched these videos back. I haven't watched them back. So I actually don't know uh, what is what is going to come. So the reactions that you're seeing from me, that they are genuine. Because I don't remember everything that I said in these videos. It was from 2019, which is a long time ago. Right. Toffee says every individual has baggage from their past and some carry this baggage and end up offloading it on their partners. Very, very true. I think many of us do that. Uh, we had a really good conversation, um, one of the one of our marriage conversations about check in baggage and carry on baggage. Right. So the carry on baggage is it's light enough. It's, it's baggage, but it's light enough. It's light enough for you to be able to kind of put it in a bag, carry it. It looks chic. You can take it on the plane with you, just put it up above or just down by your feet is no problem. And your husband or your wife, they can help you with that, especially your husband. <laughs> he can carry that with you, right? Um, but check in baggage, that's the big stuff. That's the heavy stuff. That's the stuff that can be over, you know, like overweight. You know, when uh, those of us, I think, I think Asians, you guys do this as well, but certainly Africans, we do this. You know, those big plastic woven bags where they just, they wrap the whole thing in plastic. <laughs> And they have to send that in the hold. We don't want to be offloading that kind of thing on our partners, inshallah, We're on our spouses. So we are back. We are, uh, those of you who are just joining us, welcome. We are doing a reaction to one of my most infamous videos, uh, Sisters Raise Your Standards. So we're going to go back in again. Are you ready, Brother Nasir? I'm ready. I'm ready. All I'm ready. Right. Right. So we've, we're, we're sorry. <laughs> Apologies, guys. We're going into some smoke. Okay. This is a, this is quite a hot part of the and all of that stuff, making yourself available to be treated worse than a prostitute on the street. Being slandered, backbitten, called names, humiliated in front of your family, beaten in front of your kids, sent back to your parents' house. Oh, I divorce you. Oh no, I take you back. All of that stuff. 
Ladies, we're not available. We're not available for that rubbish. You should not be available for that rubbish. Because did not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create you? Did he not create you? Are you not worthy of respect? Are you not worthy of, of the honor and dignity? And we talk about it. Ladies in the talks, yes, they love to bring it. Oh, Islam has honored the women. In Islam, women have honor and dignity, unlike blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry, guys. Yes, Allah gave us honor and dignity, but we don't honor ourselves. And we behave like we have no dignity because what we will accept shows that to everybody. It's cool. Treat me however you like. I'm a patient Muslim woman. I'm going to take it. I'll take everything you've got. I will take all the rubbish. I will take all the filth. I will take all the violence, all the cruelty, all the meanness, all the insults. I will take everything, all the filth you've got in you. I'll take it. It's fine. I'll take it. I'll carry it for you. Seriously? Wow. 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 Wow, <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot, man. I'm trying. I'm thinking back now, and I'm thinking, what, what, what was I talking about? Like, what was I referring to? Like these, what did I say? Slander, backbiting, abuse. Of you know, uh, wow. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, so, hmm. so I I agree with the with the overarching point that you're making. Right, is that sisters should have standards. I 100% agree with you. And I agree that they should not accept a certain level of behavior. 100% agree with that. I think where it can be, I think where if you were not in the emotional state that you were in when you were having this conversation, <laughs> maybe you do this i haven't seen this video maybe you do this uh coming up but i think this would have been a constructive time to then add in why sisters are doing this right and and i would suggest the reason why i see sisters doing this is they're being led by a fear-based mentality Fear-based thinking is what is leading them to settle for something that's unacceptable, right? And if you change that thinking, that's that thinking, feeling, connection, you change that fear-based narrative, right? That narrative that I'm fearful that I'll always be alone. No one will ever want me if I get a divorce. I'm a divorcee. Who would want a divorcee with one child, two children, three mm -hmm. children? Who would want a divorcee on her second marriage or her third marriage? That's a fear. That's a narrative that you create that then leads to you saying to yourself, I'm not worthy of love. I'm unlovable. I'm not worthy of something better than this. That's a narrative that you create that then produce the anxiety about the future, the fear, and thus your actions are based off of that narrative, those feelings that then leads to the action of you accepting the unacceptable and staying in it with the false notion, the false notion that it'll get better. And this is why very quickly, when I, the live that I just had, one of the advice that I gave is be intentional about creating a support system and in that support system, having a coach or a counselor, someone that's not emotionally connected to you, that will give you that uncomfortable advice that will challenge your thinking when it's not constructive. Because your girlfriends oftentimes, out of love, will lie to you. Well, I was not lying to anybody no, in this particular, in this particular this conversation. Is this is a very good nuance. You weren't lying. But because of the emotional state that you were in, you failed to give certain jewels that I know you know that someone could walk away with. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think definitely again, 
you know, the this sisters, this is this is this is for the for my detractors. Yeah, for those who say that, you know, I, uh, you know, I'm a misogynist or I, I don't love the sisters or like I'm against the sisters. You know, those of us who know or who knew, we, we know or we knew, right? The types of situations that many sisters found themselves in, right? And it's not, it's not comfortable truth for the community. It's not a comfortable truth at all, right? As Muslims, we've been given the best way. We've been given the guidance. And the reality is, guys, that many of us are broken. You know, many of us have healing to do. And I stand by that. Yes, the emotion was intense. I don't think you would get me that hyped about anything again, to be honest. I think, you know, my days of hype over that are, you know, are over, but, you know, could potentially over. But I don't think that much has changed in terms of the community. I think that we still have uh, a lot of dysfunction in the community. And this, this live was in response to that. So if you guys have noticed a theme here in this particular video, when we hear sisters about, about sisters having standards in the conversations we're having today, most people are talking about superficial standards, right? Money, height, he needs to be a, you know, like this kind of body, or he needs to have this type of job, you know, all of those types of standards, right? This video was not talking about that at all, as you can see. The video is not talking about raising your standards and making like men jump through hoops or like you deserve the best queen and all of that kind of thing. Look at the level. It was literally respect and consideration and not having your rights as a Muslim tampered with and trampled on really and I don't think that we've gone far beyond that I think that we may still be in that space in certain communities in certain households so I will not retract it even though the emotion is crazy high I don't I, I don't disagree if you guys disagree in the comments if you think that I was out of line or that you know what I was saying was dangerous then hey go ahead and let us know can we continue uh, just one quick point, something that I've said before, and, and, and sisters, this is something for you to know, and brothers as well. Remember, emotions are always valid. Right? Emotions are always valid. But the thinking that underpins, that generates the emotion may not be accurate. And that's what you want to question. It's not about questioning the emotion that you're experiencing, because the emotion that you're experiencing is understandable given given the narrative that you created, the thinking yeah. that you had, right? So as soon as you got off the call with the sister, she gave you her narrative and you created your own narrative based off of the experiences you heard from her and the experiences that you've heard from so many other sis sisters. That yeah. narrative then created an emotion of yeah. anger, Yeah. right? And yes. thus the response was, you know, the three tugs on the niqab, <laughs> taking off the earrings and ready to go in. Ready to go in. Yeah. All right, well, we're only six minutes in, guys, so <laughs> let's keep it moving, Bismillah. And we didn't talk about prostitutes. Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not create you for a noble purpose? Do you think that noble purpose is being someone's punching bag? Do you think that noble purpose is enabling somebody who is sinning in front of Allah? Do you think that noble purpose is enabling somebody who is doing haram and is oppressing people? Did Allah create you to be an enabler for an oppressor? Yes or no? Whoa. Because I'm sorry. If someone is doing something to you, I'm, we have choices, ladies. I'm sorry. This whole thing, yeah? This whole thing about I'm trapped, I can't do anything, uh, you know, da, 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 the victim mentality. I've spoken about this on my lives before. And I that is the one thing I wish we could expunge from this woman. Sisters living in a victim mentality. It is your life. Your life. And at the end of it, you will answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the truth. No lies told. You have choices. You can do anything you want. Yes, some things, there will be consequences. Some things, your family won't like them. Some things, you know, the community might think that you did the wrong thing. Some things, you know, will come at a cost. 
But at the end of the day, you have to understand that you came into this world alone and you will leave this world alone and you will be raised on your own. So if you want to spend your life the victim of other people's drama, the victim of other people's problems, their pain, their suffering, their insecurity, that's on you. But as for me, I was raised for a noble purpose. I was born for a noble purpose. I'm in this life for a noble purpose. And guess what that noble purpose is? I want to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best version of myself that I can be, having lived my best life for the sake of Allah. That's me. I don't know about you, but that's me. And as far as I'm concerned, sis, please don't play the victim card when you are allowing it, when you are accepting it, when you are enabling it. You're telling yourself a story in your head that Allah is pleased with me because I'm being a respectful wife, an obedient wife. If that's the story you want to tell yourself, then good luck with that. You're going to continue in that life. And I'll Right, okay. Let's temper this for a second. So one, uh, somebody said uh, that the choices should be within the Sharia, and for sure. You know, the assumption is when I say you can do whatever you want, obviously, you know, it's in the within the bounds of Sharia. But I think something that I've found to be quite common in some of my old conversations and I see sisters doing this, and it's been brought up to me before, is conflating different issues, right? So we've talked about an extreme situation. We've talked about extremes of abuse, extremes of, you know, rights being taken away and trampled on and being treated like a prostitute and all of this stuff, right? Extremes. And juxtapose that with a person saying, I'm being patient, I'm being a good and obedient wife, right? And the two basically being connected. And I think that one of the things that we often do, Brother Nasser, when we have these conversations is we always say, guys, we're talking to the Amatun Nas. We are talking to the, 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 the average people. There's always extremes. There's extremes of amazing marriages, right? where everything is just as you wish and everything, and there's the minority, then there are extremes of, of terrible situations, toxic situations, right? Which are hopefully, we hope, the minority, right? Then there's a spectrum in between, right? There's, there's the average, some closer to the amazing, some closer to the terrible, but there's, a, there's an average there. And... The nuance that's missed, obviously, because of the heightened emotion, right? The nuance that's missed is at what point, sorry, where are you on the spectrum as a sister? For real, for real. On this spectrum of amazing and disastrous, where are you truly on the spectrum, right? Because what I know is that our emotions and our thinking, let's start with the thinking, our thinking can make us feel that we are on the disastrous side of the spectrum when actually we are more closer, we're closer to the average, right? We can tell ourselves a story that our situation is this, this awful, dreadful, un, unacceptable situation, right? Uh, my husband is finicky, right? My husband is stingy. Uh, my husband is too fastidious and he puts too me under too much pressure with the house. For example, my husband wants to marry again. All of these become an awful relationship, an awful marriage, something that is not acceptable, right? And I think that that needs to be kind of reined in. And I think those are the conversations that we're having, right? Those are the conversations that we're having now, which is to remind sisters that firstly, it's possible that the image in your head of the ideal relationship or the ideal marriage is simply a fantasy and is, is not actually a reality that, that you should be comparing your situation to. But also, you know, for those people whose marriages are just normal, where there are normal everyday issues and normal everyday kind of ups and downs, realizing that that's what it is, it's normal. 
right? And then, of course, the sisters who this is actually related to, the ones who are in, you know, life-threatening sometimes situations, terrible situations, right? Situations which are, are, are crippling them emotionally, spiritually, et cetera, right? Uh, who this advice is for. So I don't know whether that means anything to you or to anybody else who's watching, but I did want to make that distinction because we know, like I said, those who are in the community, we know that some that these things do happen, right? These things do happen. And I, I stand by what I said, which is that, you know, as human beings, as creations of Allah, we are, we are deserving of more than that. Uh, we don't deserve to be treated in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said is incorrect, is, is not permissible, is not allowed. Right. And I do think that if we allow that type of behavior as a community, not just as the wife, not just the wife, the father, the mother, the father in law, the brother in law, the sister in law, like as a family, as a community, are you enabling haram? Or are you trying to help? You know, or are you saying, no, that's not my business, that's his house, let him do what he needs to do? Sorry, guys, uh, this is, like I said, it's been a long time since I've been in this space. I haven't listened to this video for a very long time. But these are the thoughts that are coming up for me right now. Love to hear your views on it, inshallah, before we continue. So a couple of points that came to mind is, you know, from from a modality perspective, from REBT. REBT is a version of cognitive behavior therapy. And one of the, the key tenets is it, in it is this principle of human fallibility, that we all are fallible human beings. And that's important for us to always keep in mind. And when your spouse does something that's problematic, that's one of the first things that you should remind yourself. That although I don't like this behavior, I can accept him as a fallible human being. Right? That's an important thing for yourself as well. Although I don't like what I'm doing, I can accept myself as a fallible human being, despite acting in a manner in which I don't like. Right? So acknowledging human fallibility is an important thing because it also allows you not to fall into the thing we mentioned earlier in terms of labeling self or others right that's the way you counter that so the thing with acknowledging human fallibility that you're a fallible human being or that your spouse is a fallible human being once you've done that then the question the next step is to ask yourself what is it going to cost me to endure his fallibility, hmm. right? And do I want to pay that cost? So we're not gonna get caught up in the emotion of labeling someone that he's a jerk or he's this or he's that. Like, let's get to the point. He's, he's overly aggressive. He's a fallible human being and his fallibility expresses itself in the form of aggression towards me when he doesn't get what he wants when he wants it. Okay. The question for you, sis, is what does it cost you to endure that, to tolerate that? And do you want to continue to pay that cost? Then the other question is if you have children, what is the cost to your children for you to endure that, for them to endure that, and for you and them to tolerate that? And do they need to pay that cost? And do you want to pay that cost because it's an amount between you and your Lord for their environment, their atmosphere, right? That they grow up in. You have a role in that. You co-create that. Just because your husband checks out into his fallibility and and harms the atmosphere in which they grow up. That doesn't obfuscate you from your responsibility yeah. of the environment. So yeah. it's important, one, acknowledge human fallibility. Two, acknowledge that there's a cost to the fallibility that you have that you bring to relationship, but also the cost of the fallibility that your spouse brings to it. And then determining do you want to tolerate? Do you want to pay the cost of that fallibility? And one last point that I would say that came up with this is to, to also, and this is something to keep in mind from a modality perspective as well, is there's always going to be discomfort. There's going to be discomfort in staying the same, not mm. wanting change or not 
asserting yourself for change, there's going to be discomfort with that. Mm -hmm. Because you already you know there's going to be discomfort with that because that's what you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. It's getting on the call and calling you up. Yep. Your own, if you're in tune with yourself, you see the self-destructive things that you're doing to yourself and or what you're doing in terms of taking it out on your kids or loved ones. Mm -hmm. Right. So you know there's discomfort that comes with staying as things are in the situation. But there's also discomfort with change. Yeah, yeah. So there's the always a price to be paid. There's exactly. always a price to be paid, there's and that's the that's the price that's going to be paid. There's always going to be discomfort. or go. Yes, so no. Which there's always a price. Do you want yeah. which discomfort do you want yeah. to endure? That's the yeah. question. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And somebody said in the chat, Jazakallah Khair, brother Nasib. This is great. Because we don't just do, you see, guys, you see, this is why this is the best channel on YouTube, okay? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Because we don't just react to videos for views, right? We actually break things down and, and give, inshallah, you know, real actionable steps, you know, real sincere advice. Um, so you guys are not here just getting entertained, you know, you're, you're learning as well, inshallah. Um, but I, I'm curious, when brothers here, can, it, can you hear me? Am I still okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was looking at the, the, at the chat. Yeah. When brothers hear about the men I'm talking about in this video, what's the, re what's the response? Is it, who's she talking about? I don't know anyone like that. Not all men are like that. Like, I'm not like that. What, what is the response? Or is it like, oh, here she goes, all men are trash again. What is the response from men? I want to hear from brothers now. When you hear me or sisters talking about the men, the, the kinds of men that do the things that we were talking about, that we're talking about in this video, what, what is your response as a Muslim man? So. How, do you, how does it make you feel? David says he knows men like that. Thanks for being yeah, honest. It's not, it's, not, it's not about how it makes me feel. It's more about the thoughts that come up. And the thoughts that come up to me is, you know, where are we going with this? Right. Where are we going with this? Are you acknowledging an issue that you're dealing with and you want to address it and you want to um, seek a solution? Or is this about trying to bash all men? Is that where we're going with this? So it, that if, sounds like a defensive reaction. No, no, that's, you've heard it too often or something that's, like that's, that. That's, a, that's mm. a real reaction. That's that's not about emotion. That's me logically wanting to understand where we're mm. going. With it. Mm. Do you are you looking to get advice? Are you looking to get a solution? Mm. You want technique? You want tool? You want philosophy? Or, or is this a bashing session? Was this a bashing session? Because mm. As a man, if it's a bashing session, I'm not here for that. Right. It, because because the reality is you're not dealing in logic now, sis. It's not it's not a reality. It's not all men. And if that's what you're into, you got girlfriends for that. Or or you can book a session and, and pay me and I'll sit down and we can work through it together. But if it's if you're going to deal with the illogical, the lack of reality, i.e., bashing all oh, men, men are like this, Muslim men are that. Okay, okay, but the question was not about all men, but just when men are typified in this way. When you hear right, Muslim you have, men being typified, that mm. comes up for me when I okay, hear fair that. enough, fair enough. That's what, okay. that's what comes up for me. I just want right. to know going? where is this going, and where then from there, you can let me know. Mm. And and we've talked about this before. What's important for men? Time, energy, attention, and money. Mm. I want to know where this is going because that lets me know if I need to allocate my time, energy, and attention to this. Right. And if it's not worth my time, energy, and attention, it's going to mess up my money. <laughs> okay. Tofia says, what I've heard mostly from men is denial. The blame is thrown at the woman. Okay. Nobody else in the chat is telling me how they feel when they hear of Muslim men being typified as abusers. But do let us know in the chat. We're going to continue, guys. Let me say this one thing. One, mm. one other thing, and I agree with the brother in the chat. I do know brothers like this. Mm. I, I, I don't know them personally as in my circle, but I've heard these stories enough from clients, from sisters that I work with, um, that I don't think it's not a reality. I think it is. But I think, unfortunately, it's a byproduct of 
men not understanding how to understand their thinking and regulate their emotions, and sisters that are unfortunately living in a fear-based narrative that keeps them stuck mm. in situations that you know are unacceptable. Right, mashallah. Adam says they exist well, obviously, the but they aren't to the scale that women make it out to be. Mm. And, and, and some of them are even worse because, you know, oftentimes sisters don't want to tell you the, the real what's going on. They only tell you what they're comfortable, you knowing. Mm -hmm. Right. At least that's what I've come to to know with my through my work. But one of the point I really want to mention that a sister said, uh, not every situation, some situations are fixed, can be fixed and some cannot. I can't I don't see the comment, but uh, sis, I completely agree with you. Some situations can be fixed, some can't. Yeah. But I prefer to frame that in, what is the cost it's going to take me? Yeah, that's is the, the question. I will have to pay while I wait and endure mm -hmm. this process of him changing. Because the reality is you don't know until it happens mm -hmm. if he's going to be able to change. So. What is the cost I got to pay as I wait? Because the reality is, remember, you can't force someone to heal and change on your time stamp. You, it's not a, you can't dictate to them. You can't demand to them when they're going to change and heal and wake up and see it. That's when you, you got to take accountability for deciding to endure all that comes with the process of change. And I, I want to say this as well, inshallah, guys. And if anybody has noticed like a softening in my approach um because obviously in this video and in this period i was not soft at all on anything like this right it was a zero tolerance okay and uh, muna i i don't i don't think the zero tolerance is 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 necessarily helpful to for us if we're going to deal with other human beings right now of course like i said abuse is on a spectrum mistreatment is on a spectrum right um and at the moment i'm not sure exactly what we're talking about because we haven't kind of pinned it down everything's on a spectrum but i would say there are certain things that are like a you know and i would say for myself if my daughter came and told me this is what happened it will be a like pack your bags you're coming home right if he beats you up and i don't mean like smacks your leg i mean if he beats you up like you're coming home, sis. Like that, but that's me. That's my personal thing. And I think most of us, for our daughters, we would say that. Like lays hands on you, muskila. This is a problem. Brings another woman in the house and does madness. You know the st crazy stuff that we hear. That's just like, nah, dude. Like, we're not doing that. We're not playing that game. Anyway, let's not get sidetracked. Inshallah, this chat is extremely exciting and live. But we I'll tell you back. where that life goes. You right now, maybe you're feeling strong, but by the end of it, he will have rinsed you. He will have rinsed you. He will have rinsed your self-esteem, your self-worth, your confidence, any shred of love for yourself. He will rinse all of that. And the worst thing is, very often, they rinse your iman as well. That's true. Because at the end of it, when you can't take any more, you may have lost friends. You may have lost family by that point. You may even have lost your children, okay? And you're left there, an empty shell extreme example but 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 true like that stuff happens sorry guys YouTube gonna make money out of this video if they don't do nothing else uh i stand by do that you stand think up. that that is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants what? for you ask yourself that do you think that is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for you yeah apologies you stand by what I stand by what I said about abusive marriages uh, destroying the woman so that she stays for a good reason. Maybe she wants to be patient. She wants to be the good wife. But in the end, she's left empty because mm. the situation has completely depleted her. And like I said, and again, extreme, right? Let's, let's, let, like, let's keep it a buck. We're talking about extreme situations here. But I think I know which situations I was actually talking about when I was uh, when I was when I was saying this, and uh, yeah, um, that that is that is what can happen, you know. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Okay. 
Right, let's keep it going. Oh, may Allah help yes, mercy on us. And We've got social systems in some of our communities mm. that enable this type of behavior. Sorry. But guys, the change starts with us. The uncles are not going to change it. Probably most of the aunties are not going to change it. And the husbands who are doing this stuff are definitely not going to change it. It starts with us raising our standard and not accepting a certain level of abuse, neglect, uh, violence, cruelty, whatever it is. Because subhanAllah, it's like, and I know, I know where it comes from. I can see it. I can see it coming through. The sister who is in that situation has, has, has believed, has just drunk the Kool-Aid that she's not worthy. I know. And if you are that sister in that situation, I understand. Okay, I get it. He's made you think that you're worthless. He's made you think that no one will want you. He's made you think that without him, you're nothing in this dunya. Bring it. Although I understand that mindset, I understand where that mindset comes from, but that's just not reality. That's not valid. He doesn't make you feel that way. You make yourself feel that way. And I know that's gonna be hard for sisters to accept. But the proof of that is when your abuser leaves, oftentimes you continue to abuse yourself through what you tell yourself about yourself. And you experience that same emotion when he's not there. When you believe the narrative that he's given you, that's a choice. You have to be accountable for the narrative that you give your stamp of approval on. And I just, may I just jump in at this point? Because I know, I know what's going to come in the comments. Mm -hmm. Brother Nasir is gaslighting mm -hmm. the sisters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I right? welcome So I want to, may I, may I offer? a slight reframe for those who feel uncomfortable with what Brother Nasser just said, which is that it's exactly what I was saying in the video. You need to take control of what goes on in here, right? That's men and women, but this message was for the sisters. So I want to say that. What happens in your head, that's in, under your control by Allah's will, by Allah's grace. No one can make you do anything in here. And that's why Brother Nasser is picking up on the point where you said he can't make you feel anything, right? Of course, a sister is going to say, well, of course he can. If he tells me I'm worthless and I feel worthless, that's what he made me feel. But again, we talk about the thinking, feeling connection. He's told you you're worth nothing. You're worthless. You took that in. You chose to believe it. And now you believe that and you tell yourself the story that you're worthless and now you feel worthless. It's not an automatic thing, guys, right? It's not somebody tells you you're ugly, all of a sudden you feel ugly. All right, let's, let's, let's play a game with this, right? Yeah, psychological abuse, you can call it that, I guess. Um, but let's play a game with this, right? If a really desirable or respectable person, let's say a desirable person, right, tells you that you're ugly or like, you know, like you're, you're not on my level, dismisses you. Chances are, because that person is a desirable person, you, you take in what they say, you take it on board, you believe it, and you start to feel down on yourself, right? You start to look down on yourself, you start to critique yourself, etc. right? What about if the person who is saying to you that you're not desirable, is they themselves not desirable in your eyes? You think that they are hideous, but they say the exact same thing with the same wording and the same tone and everything. Because you don't respect that person, because you don't give that person's opinion any weight, in your head, you're like, you crazy? Have you seen yourself lately? And you don't even let it land with you, let alone make you feel bad, right? So the point is that it's not just what happens out there that impacts the way you feel it is your perspective of what happens it is your your processing of what happens that affects the way you feel so again going back to the original point of the video 
is taking control of this, right? Taking control of your thoughts and, and, and taking, because accountability is something that, you know, they say accountability is kryptonite apparently, but it's responsibility, right? You are responsible for your mental state. You can take control of that if you want to. You can also give away your power and allow other people to dictate to you how you feel on any given day, right? And what you think about and what you, you know, what you process. And you can do that. And a lot of us do, but you don't have to. You have the ability, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ability, all of us as human beings, to control what happens in our heads. The thinking that we allow, the thoughts that we entertain, the stories that we tell ourselves, that's up to us, guys. So we all, that's why in our show, Candid Conversations, we keep going back to the thinking-feeling connection. We keep going back to the power of thinking to impact your emotions. We keep talking about de-escalating emotions. We keep talking about regulating emotions. Why? Because it allows you to show up in a much stronger way, in a much more empowered way, and in a way that allows you to get what you want, right? So, yeah. Okay. Right. So Toffee says, um, he can't make you feel that, but his actions can. For example, a man belittles his wife day in and day out. The kids then learn that and belittle her. Did he make the kids feel that way? Obviously, the children are copying what they see, right? They're copying what they see. Yeah. See, I, see this, is, this, is, this is, again, this is problematic. Hmm. He can't make you feel hmm. a certain way. He can give you data. You process that data and then you feel a certain way. The fuel for emotions are your thoughts, the beliefs you hold, the narrative you create, the meaning you make of what is said. So just as, just as a young, well, I won't use that example. What I will say is this, whenever there's an event, there is the perception of the event, and then there's the evaluation of the event. Mm -hmm. You and I can see the same event and perceive it the same. The evaluation we make though, subsequently mm -hmm. of what we have perceived mm -hmm. is informed by our lived experience. Yep. Your lived experience is gonna be different from mine, but the reality is what we bring to that perception that event is our own evaluation that we make. We bring our experiences to that, we make an evaluation and that evaluation then produces the emotion and subsequently what we do. So him calling you scum or any other derogatory term, you can view that as he loves me, He's my husband. He knows me more than anyone, so it must be true. And if he doesn't love me, no one else will. Or you could take the, the meaning of, he's in a bad state right now. Something is wrong with him. And I'm not going to view myself as he views me right now. There's totally different ways in which you can interpret what he's doing and what he's saying. That's the power of choice you have. Now you can choose to give that away to someone who's being physically or psychologically or emotionally abusive, but that too is a choice. And that's the part that you have to take ownership for. It's comfortable to say, no, he's doing it. He's doing something that's wrong. No one is, is, is justifying what he's doing it's wrong clearly whether it's psychological whether it's emotional whether it's physical but the reality is the responsibility is on you to be in control of the narrative you create when he acts in an irresponsible manner when he acts in an abusive manner because if not if not and i'll stop with this if not then basically what you're doing is you're placing your healing 
and your emotional destiny in the hands of the person that's abusing you. Where I'm from, we call that hustling backwards. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Um, I want to just make a point before we continue that the goal of choosing the thoughts that you entertain and thus the feeling that you have, guys, the goal of that is not to enable you to endure abuse. No. Okay. I, I just want to make that clear. The goal of this emotional mastery is not to enable you to be patient through abuse, like real abuse. Okay. The goal is, and Brother Nasser, this is, this is the work, right? So please correct me if I'm wrong. The goal is A, to not allow these, what, you know, to not allow what is happening to impact your sense of self-worth and, and who you are, right? That's the first thing. So that it doesn't land, right? It doesn't do the damage that maybe it was intended to do, maybe not, who knows, whatever, right? But it doesn't do that damage. That's the first thing. And the second thing is to de-escalate your emotions so that when the moment passes, you are able to bring this up in a healthy and productive way. Yes, Brother Nasser? Yeah, that, that's it. That's it. Like I said earlier to the sister in the comments that she said, some situations can be changed and some situations cannot be. And the point with that is you want to be in the best space mentally and emotionally to make that determination of if you want to stay engaged in this, if you want to endure the cost of going through this process of change, or it's not worth it for you. In order to do that though, it's ideal, it's best practice for you to be in the best space mentally and emotionally. And so in this type of situation, that's what you want. You wanna get in the best space mentally and emotionally in order to deal with this situation in the most constructive way. So no, it's not in any way justifying the behavior. It's in no way saying you get in the best space mentally and emotionally uh, so that you can stay in the situation. It's getting the best space mentally and emotionally so that you can make the most constructive choice yeah. whether this is the best situation for you and your children to stay in and what yeah. is the cost of staying. Yeah. And remember, guys, as we said this, we, we said this and we will probably keep saying this, that there's always a price to pay for every choice. Stay, go, yes, no. There is something you will gain from that decision and there's a price you will pay to gain that thing right and for some of you the uh, and I, let's not get into this because we'll we'll go off on a complete tangent <laughs> so let's uh, let's let's stick with uh, this because we do tend to do that mashallah let's go bismillah that nobody will want you even your family doesn't want you even your kids don't want you where would you go if you leave me Ooh. but it's not true it's so not true. And I really, I really, I want you to hear that. In the eyes of Allah, you are gold. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't create things for, 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 for no purpose. You were created for a purpose. And you were created beautiful in your own unique way, with your own unique gifts, with your own talents, with your own special gifts to give to the world in whichever way you choose. And I know like one talk on Instagram or Facebook is not going to change everything for you. It may not even change your mind, but please think about that and ask yourself, is this what I was created for? Is this what I was created for? Was I created to be the victim? Was I created to be the punching bag? Was I created to be the the abused one, the neglected one, the abandoned one, is that what I was created for? Or does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have a bigger plan for me? Maybe this was just a catalyst for me to realize who I really am and step in into who I really am and start making some choices for myself. So 
I think right now what is happening is a perfect example of what we were just saying. Right now, you have articulated a alternative belief, an alternative narrative that a sister can have in this situation. The event didn't change, but the narrative she constructed or you are giving the audience is an alternative narrative versus the narrative of fear. I can't do any better than this. No one would want me. I better just stay where I'm at and endure this. You, that's one narrative, that's one meaning, that's one evaluation a sister can make. Or they can have this other narrative that you just articulated. This is, again, it comes back to the power of choice, meaning the power to create meanings based off of what you experience. The adversity yeah. happens. What is the meaning you're going to make that is then going to feel how you feel and what you do. So funny to me, actually, that, you know, nowadays you'll hear brothers really pushing back on this type of, this, this, this piece of um, coaching, if you like, or like inspirational words that I gave at this point in the video. You'll hear some brothers pushing back against this, saying that, you're hyping the sisters up too much. The sisters now feel that they are, you know, these amazing creatures and, you know, like they are too good for everyone and too good for everything. And, you know, they were born for so much more, et cetera. And um, I think, yeah, I mean, that is I something that, that, that I've mean. seen. I've, I've seen it, you know, that basically, because what a lot of brothers today want to see is sisters being called to account. That's what they wanna see, right? Sisters taking accountability, right? And the big complaint is, oh, the sisters are never made accountable, right? Everything is the brother's fault and the sisters never have to take accountability. Even the whole sort of, you know, women, what's it, accountability is women's kryptonite. We've seen it in the chat. Guys, give me a yes in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. Brother Nasser is yeah, looking like I'm talking I nonsense don't, here. I don't <laughs> I, 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 let me let me make the connection. Mm -hmm. So, and and again, this is part of the the uh, the criticism that I've received in this latest, you know, kind of this new uh, phase, if you like, of my conversations with sisters, where I'm being not like I was in this video, right? In this video, I'm I'm bigging them up, right? I'm 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 blowing, I'm I'm like I'm breathing life into them, right? I'm pouring into them. I'm telling them that they are special, that they are unique, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them and has you know wants better for them. So I'm encouraging them, right? And um maybe in the videos that I'm doing now, I'm more like saying, Hey sisters, wake up. Okay, like we are not perfect out here, you know, we're making mistakes too. We need to stop doing this, we need to stop doing that. So there's the accountability aspect, right? But um I think um when you work with Muslim women as a coach, as a mentor, um any any of the personal development, personal growth type of spaces, you you really get to see firsthand how low our confidence really is mm. right and there may yeah. be some brothers out there who think that that's a good thing who think that you know sisters should be extremely humble should not think much of themselves and should basically just be accepting and acquiesce over everything you know there, there is definitely a, a vibe with that but when you meet women who you know at the end of the day they're doing a fantastic job they're handling what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them to handle. Okay. They have they're in their marriages, they're trying their best, they've got their kids, you know, they're taking care of family members, blah, 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 all of this stuff, right? But they think that they they don't really have much to offer, that they haven't achieved anything in life, you know, that their their lives are a disappointment. And the way that they view themselves, the story they tell themselves about themselves is one of low low confidence you see look just in the chat the brother's like come on sis this is generation boss babe again let's not <laughs> mm. Mm. you can't do that guys you can't do that firstly i'm gen x 
right? So between me and these Gen Zs on TikTok, there's three generations or so-called, right? I'm Gen X. We are both Gen X. There's millennials and then there's new Gen Zs coming up. I work mainly with people in our age group, right? Sisters who are mothers now who have children, right? Who are, you know, sort of middle, you know, uh, and, and kind of, you know, coming into adulthood. Mm. And those sisters, ones that I've worked with, this is real. And brothers, you can believe us or not believe us, but this is real, right? Society, especially for the practicing Muslim sister, the society does not fill her with confidence, especially when she's chosen a traditional role, when she's chosen to live by Allah's commands. Society does not give her the boss babe energy. It does not big her up. Okay, it does not, you know, tell her, reinforce her decisions, right? It does not tell her she's a queen, right? That's that's that that is some online hype that you guys are talking about. But for them, the, and I would say from our generation, the majority of, of sisters who are married and have families, that's you know, in terms of time wise, that, that's their priority, right? And they work very hard at it, whether they're homeschooling or they're doing like the, the school runs and all of this stuff, some of them are working as well. We know this. This is the reality, guys. Yeah, this is not the online hype. This is the reality of Muslims, Muslim families trying to figure this whole thing out, right? Trying to figure out their own personal stuff, trying to figure out the relationship, trying to figure out the children, raising children in this crazy society, you know, the financial strain, you know, what the children are going to do and all of this kind of thing, right? So this... As this part of the video, I haven't necessarily done a video. No, I have actually, because my book show up is all about this. <laughs> but the point is, it's needed still. Yeah. And, and anybody who's on this channel who feels like, no, 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 we just need to be beating the sisters into submission. They just need to be like put in their place. I'm not with you. I'm not with you. I don't agree. Because everyone needs accountability and support. Right? You need the carrot and the stick. You need the good and the bad. You need your good to be acknowledged and you need your bad to be rectified, right? So we're not going to have a situation where we only talk about one aspect or we only do one side of it. That's just not my bag. And it's not what's needed either. It's like, it's like men, it's like brothers. You know, you have brothers who, when they come into brothers' spaces, there will be you know, the conversation of that, that bigs them up, that builds them up, right? That reminds them what it is to be a man, right? And how they should be proud of the rajula. And, it, you know, it, it really kind of gives them that sense of you should be confident, you should be this, you should be that, like you guys, you know, and, and they get like hyped about it, right? And that's needed because our boys and our men are suffering from low confidence and society is part of that as well, right? So that's needed. But on the other side, what's needed is being told man up right? Man up, you know, get your money right, okay? Get in shape, right? Fix your relationship with Allah. Stop making excuses. That's the slap around the head that's also needed. And if we do one and not the other, we're doing our audience a disservice. And I'm really ranting on now, please. <laughs> Brother Nas, do you have something to say before we go back to the video? Only adjustment I would make, although I know the point that you're making, but I think it needs to change. And it may be a uphill battle but i'm for it because we got to get rid of the man up because the man up is prelude to you're not a real man and but men have those conversations though right and i don't think it's right just oh, like okay. i don't think it's right for men on the men bar that are saying men are acting like boys and aren't real men if they do right. a b and c right because mm. the reality is i i know the intention behind what you're saying but in reality mm. when you say and as many have said, you know, you're just one of what you've always heard uh, is men need to be men or man up. The reality is I can think of a thousand reasons or a thousand things that men need to adjust that can fit into that. And I'm sure you could think of a thousand as well. Mm -hmm. And for that moment, a man doesn't walk away knowing what you mean. Right. That's why it's not constructive. Mm. Right. When you say, you know, not being a real man or not you person, but when, when it said not being a real man or man up, you're not giving anybody anything. Yeah. Give them what it is. So I acknowledge 
there are definitely things that men need to work on. And as we talked about earlier, is, is this element of men being able to lead themselves, being disciplined, having mm. goal attainment. That's something that have your goal, have your vision, and be able to demonstrate that you have the discipline to accomplish that. Yeah. Someone could say, when you're not doing that, you need to man up. But if you just hear man up and you don't hear mm. that, you're missing the opportunity yeah. to help the man. Yeah. And I yeah. think on a, on a bigger level, I can't tell you how many kutbas I've sit in during Juma or gone to a doors at a masjid. And the imam is just going on with these labels and he's missing the opportunity to give brothers the nuance to change. Right. Yeah. This is this the, thing. Yeah. Right. Sorry, guys, can I just say, those of you in the chat who have a problem with Brother Nasir's pink uh, cravat, uh, you He's need to understand, awesome. you need to understand, brother, brother, brother Nasir is going to come on this platform looking smooth if he ain't going to do nothing else. Okay, so no. just, just drop it. It's not worth it. Okay, you're wasting your time. Let's keep it moving. Bismillah. Self and start looking after myself and start cherishing, protecting and loving myself so that everybody else can understand how to do it. Because guess what? If you don't know how to respect yourself, no one is gonna do it. And no one's gonna teach you how to respect yourself, especially not somebody who is thriving on disrespecting you. Can we pause? You teach people how to treat you. Are the way you treat yourself. One one quick point, and that's a, and this is an important point. When you don't respect yourself, you may also push away brothers that want to show you respect and teach you how to respect yourself, because you're just not accustomed to it. Hmm. That's a, I, I've seen that, and that's just something. That's another cost that can happen when you don't respect yourself. And you don't hold yourself to a certain standard. It looks foreign when a man does come in your life that is demonstrating to you how you should be treated. And I think the point still stands, guys. And I and I, I believe it, it applies to men and women, even though this was a sister stream, which is, you know, no one's going to respect you more than you respect yourself. If you don't respect yourself, don't expect people to respect you. You don't. You can't look after yourself and, and, and keep, you know, yeah, pattern up. The way you respect yourself, the way you love yourself, that is how you teach others to do it. So stand in your power, stand in your worth, <laughs> stand for who you are, for who you were created to be. Guys, this life is short. And contrary to what you may have thought, it's not meant to be. A hellhole. You don't have to stay in a hellhole. Can you see? Can you see the thing that is making me cringe right now? It is the the extreme, these extremes that I keep dropping. Hellhole, you know, and all of these extreme, extreme things. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's making me cringe a little bit. That's, why uh, is that? Just, just why? I'm just curious. Just, just because again, I'm talking as if the extreme the extreme uh situation is 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 normal is like is is widespread you know what i'm saying because this video wasn't when i was when i'm speaking and obviously the number of people that watched it um it wasn't just to that minority who are in a hellhole right but there are many of us look it's just, <laughs> i case it's not just you it's making me cringe too yeah i think the hyperbole. I think it's the hyperbole that is making me cringe. Like it's 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 a lot. Yeah, it's a bit over the top to be fair. But I mean, hey, I think the point is being made, but it's it it is a bit hyperbolic to be fair. I'm gonna own that, guys. I'm gonna own that. All right, let's carry on. We will be tried, guys. No matter where we are, married, not married, widow, divorced, kids, no kids, one kid, ten kids, living with in-law living us isolated from family, employed, unemployed, self-employed, rich, poor, we will be tested regardless. 
But some tests are not worth it because they destroy you. Okay, and sometimes we're being tested by the bad behavior of others, and it is not upon us to enable them. It is upon us to guide them to the truth, to help them come back from their sin, from their haram, help them repent, and help them become a better person because we refused to be the victims of their bad character. Can we pause there for a Maybe second? Maybe you're meant to be his wake up call. Oh, maybe you're going to be the one to show him that it's not okay. What are your thoughts on that? I think that, I, I think I think it comes back to what I said earlier about getting in the right space, missing an emotion, and then assess the worth, right? Okay. Assess uh, not your worth, but is it worth it for me to endure this situation, right? That's an important piece and getting in that best space so that you can assess that. The cost, what is the cost? So when I hear you say that, what is the cost of me being that stimulus or me perceiving that I may be that stimulus for him to change? Wait a second though, wait a second though, because to, to clarify, what, okay. I, what I was saying specifically was you're not serving yourself or the person by allowing the behavior, right? And maybe what is needed is for you to stand up and say something. And that would have been his wake up call. Because if you enable it and you accept it, he continues doing the haram. He continues being the impressor. He continues to, to, to kind of do whatever the wrong that he's doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just think, I, so I, I, I get your point. And, and I, I just think it definitely depends on how, what is the assessment you make of the situation, right? Uh, because it may be worth it depending on what you're going through, right? It may not be. See, this, this the, the, the challenge with this conversation is we're not talking about a specific situation where the details are yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so in a general sense, it may not be worth it. And in some senses, it may be worth it, right? It depends, right, on, on the nuance of the situation. But are you I, saying? I, hold on a second. Are you are you saying about because let's let's be clear. The okay. point being made was not about staying or going. It okay. was about standing up and putting a stop to whatever it was, and and being a catalyst for this person to realize that I can't do this anymore. It's not okay. That was what the yeah. The yeah so so, so yeah. I think I think so. Let's do this for the sake of conversation. Let's not. It's not for the sake of this moment. We're not talking about extremes, okay? No, 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 no. Because this was extremes. <laughs> this was all about extremes in this video. But yeah, go ahead. We can do that, inshallah. Because if if that's the if that's the case, if we're not talking about extreme, then yeah, I would say it's in your best interest get in the best space mentally and emotionally, and then be assertive about influencing change. Mm -hmm. Right, not dictating change because the reality is you can't make yourself do anything and you can't make anyone else do anything. It's hard to control yourself. You best influence yourself, and the best you can do is influence others. Right, okay. but the reality is, yes, if it's not an extreme situation, I'm definitely of the opinion get in the best space mentally and emotionally, and then try to be assertive in a manner that's most constructive to the situation. Right, to get the change that you're desiring, right? That's what I agree with. But if it's an extreme situation, then I, I, I think you need to, to be, again, get back in the, in the best space mentally and emotionally, and then determine if this is something that you need to be in or not, and how to best exit the situation. Yeah. And just yeah. to be very clear, and I don't mind the smoke that I get, I'm not of this opinion that, um, sisters shouldn't request a, a divorce and try to get out of abusive situations. I, I don't I don't have uh, patience or tolerance for that. Okay. I'll take the smoke. Well clearly I didn't have patience or tolerance for it either. So let's go <laughs> let's keep we're not doing too badly. By accepting the abuse, by accepting the ill treatment, he will not change. He will not change. Ooh. I'm going to say it again. He will not change just because you keep accepting it because.
he is in a good place right now. As far as he's concerned, this is good. This works for me. I'm happy. Yeah. I don't love my wife. I don't, I don't agree with that. But I, she's I boring see to me, but she's there. She look after the kids. She look after me. She look after the house. It's cool. Why should he change? Why would he change? What's the that. impetus? I agree you with keep that. taking it. He's gonna keep giving it to you. Ah, uh, no, <laughs> no lies mind. told. <laughs> if you were in that situation, yeah. you'd do the same thing. Wait, hold on. Let me put it this way, yeah. Let me pause. Her. If you Let had a husband her. who allowed you to. Uh, oh, okay. I'm gonna turn it on. This is in a minute. This is cool. Uh, no lies told. Do you do you see something in there? So I, I do. I do agree that if the comfort is there. I, I do agree that oftentimes, in most cases, behavior changes when we don't like what we're getting, when the yeah. cost becomes the too much. Mm, 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 if yeah. That's the principle that you're trying to articulate or that you are articulating. I agree with that. However, I do, I do leave room for change happening outside of a sister changing. Um, and or that he, I can't remember the wording that you used, um, but essentially saying that uh, he won't change. I forgot the wording that you used. Yeah, yeah, no, I said that if the situation, if she continues to accept it, he will continue doing it. As long as yeah. he continues to take it, he'll continue to give it. Why yeah. would he change? Yeah. As a, I think as a general rule, I think as a general beings, rule, yeah. I would agree with that. General rule, I would agree yeah. with that. And I and I would agree and I would co-sign that that look, the reality is uh behavior change is typically based off of discomfort. I yeah. don't like what I'm getting, so I'm gonna yeah. make a change. Hence yeah, exactly. I don't like if speeding, if the speeding ticket is only one dollar, I'm going to speed. But if yeah. the speeding ticket is a thousand dollars and I pay it one time. I'm not speeding again. Yeah, yeah. So I agree with it in principle, but I would just say um, this is why it's best to get in this best space mentally and emotionally, establishing yeah. the support system and working with someone because yeah. that will help you assess if you staying and enduring is there is there really a probability of him changing? Yeah. Well, I'm not I mean, this, yeah. Yeah, this is this was this was the point I think of the whole thing is that look, if you're not going to stand up for yourself, you've made a choice, and your yeah. choice is to continue to allow this to continue and for it to continue for as long as the person is uh, is, is is willing to continue. Right? Um, got an interesting comment here. How about a woman's part? Here? Oh, oh, I forgot, guys, you can do this showing thing. Oh, I forgot <laughs> about this. This is so yeah. cool. Okay, so how about the woman's part in worsening the situation? like triggering her spouse and pushing his buttons deliberately then playing the victim. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I, I, I'm not, so. I didn't I'm entertain not, those types of thoughts at the time, guys. That's why I did not, uh, I did not discuss this in the video because, uh, yeah, I, I didn't entertain ideas such as somebody's behavior could actually be a response to someone else's, but the person who started it ends up the worst <laughs> on, on the, on the losing side. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm still not a fan of that. Like the reality is, I, I'm not a fan of triggering. I'm not. I'm not a fan of this blanket use of triggering. The reality is, she could be out of pocket. I I get that, and I and and you know you know from our previous podcast. I don't. I'm not for that. I don't tolerate that. If if you have a valid point. Great, I love you, but if you're going to talk to me in that way, we're going to have to talk about this later when you're in a better space. Mm. This is not going to happen with you talking this way or with that tone or with the with that wording. That's not going to happen. So she can be curt with me, and I can respond in that manner. Love you, but we're not doing this right now because of the way you're talking and your tone. Let's talk later on tonight when you have calmed down. Or I can choose to say to myself, how dare you talk to me like this? I create this home for you. I provide for you so you can be here all day and not do nothing and sit on it. No, I'm going to show you, you're going to respect me. Those are two different narratives yep. that are going to produce 
two different responses, a response yeah. emotionally and a response behavioral. The one that I said at first is one that's probably going to be more constructive to us really getting to the root of the problem because she may have a valid point. It just so happens that right now she's not in the best space mentally and emotionally to articulate it in a way that's constructive. Can I just say at this point as well that for that approach to be constructive, you would need, and sisters, this is coming from the woman's side, because I know some of us, we like, we like to fight, right? We, we want to get it out on the table now. And I want you to hear me now. And I want you to respond to me now the way I need to be responded. Guys, say it in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. So if, you're, if you say to your husband, um, you know what, I am so, I cannot believe that you did X, Y, and Z today. Like, I am so, I'm so disappointed. Like, how could you, da, 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 da. And he says to you, you're clearly not in the right space to talk about this. So why don't we talk about this tomorrow? Ah! Yeah. Put it in the chat, guys. That woman yeah. is going to go crazy. And, 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 and so, and so he's probably conditioned her to think and believe that that's going to be acceptable. But if he maintains his frame before he gets married to her, to let her know that that's not tolerated, mm. I'm open to you expressing your concerns, your challenges with things where in which I may fall short. But what's not going to happen is you're not going to speak to me in a disrespectful way. You're going to pause and we're going to talk about this when you're in a better space. Open to the discussion, but not like this. <laughs> Our brother <laughs> Bengali Dream says that even as a guy, I get angry about arguing later. Like, <laughs> I don't want to see that. Um, <laughs> and, so, and, and so to really, if we're going to use the word trigger, trigger your audience that has been in there in the past, I don't entertain arguing. And I don't... I don't encourage any man to entertain arguing. We will entertain discussion, but there is no arguing. You're not, you, you're not, you know, tugging on in the car three times, putting a ticket off the air, <laughs> that you about to get busy. That ain't happening. There's nothing wrong with tugging on the niqab three times. If a sister needs to tug on the niqab, then she's going to tug on the niqab. But hey, maybe I'm not on your watch. So how's that? No, no, okay. no not on mine. And so, so oh. my, point, my point is, my point is this. A sister, and this is about leadership as well, when we talked about earlier about a man leading himself and not allowing himself, his mental and his emotional destiny to be dictated by his wife who for whatever reason is not in the best space mentally and emotionally. That's still, if he does that, he's not holding himself accountable. Well, we've lost frame. We've lost frame, I think. That's, that's he's he's lost frame, but he's also lost his, his mental and emotional space, right? Mm -hmm. He's now the puppet, he's now the puppet of the puppeteer who's his wife. Mm -hmm. Reality is you take the data, just like we were saying earlier, it holds true for men. If you take the data of how she is right now, you perceive it, and then you make an evaluation. Evaluation is whatever it is right now for her really has upset her. No problem. We can discuss this, but let's do it later. Okay. Or if right now you can calm down, we can do it right now. But what's not going to happen is that disrespect. Oh, now you're going to trigger even more people by saying, calm down. Okay, guys, let's, let's pivot. <laughs> let's pivot and let's go back to the video, I inshallah. What, I don't know what type of household their husbands are accepting. <laughs> Some people are puppets of the puppeteer. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> um, speak to him in a really, really, really disrespectful, cruel way. Okay. Every day abusing him, abusing his family, abusing his people, telling him he's not a man. He's nothing yeah you don't want to sleep with him yeah you don't want to look after his kids he has to stay and look after them okay and he allowed you to do that and that's what you like and that's what you get off on why would you change why, why would you change you're cool he's accepting it but it's cool like this is us this is who we are this is what we do it's fine <laughs> Just like that, when you have a husband who's in a, in a certain groove, yeah? 
And maybe that groove isn't grooving you, if you know what I mean. Like, it's a groove that is not helping you, but he's in a groove and you're accepting it. Why is he going to change? He's not going to change. He's never going to change until something happens. <laughs> something has to happen. Something has to click. What will it be when you say to him, I've raised my standard and this is not acceptable to me anymore. When you say to him, this needs to change, otherwise, da, da, da. When you say to him, we need to get help. And if you're not happy to get help with me, that is going to have its consequences. And they are, blah, blah, blah. When you say to him, I've had enough. When you say to him, I don't accept that anymore. I deserve more than that. When you say to him, if you love me, this is what I want. This is my standard. When you start to have those types of conversations, he starts to see that that behavior that he was going with before is, is, is not sustainable. It's not sustainable because the status quo has changed. You have changed, you've raised your standard, you're communicating with him. I'm not talking about getting rude. I'm not talking about being disrespectful or rebellious. I'm talking about you internally raising your standard and communicating that with him and continuing to communicate for the sake of Allah because I didn't think that was so bad I didn't think that was so bad I think everybody's having a, like a I think people got triggered by the, the, the title what do you think brother now so let's wrap this up because we've been here mashallah almost two hours so what are your thoughts? Okay, because you know me, we've been working together now since the end of last year. You didn't see these videos before. You hadn't known me before. What's What would you say is the difference? And guys, let us know in the chat uh, what you see as the difference. And do you think this video was out of pocket? Do you think I was out of pocket or was I just in a different space? Was I just emotionally heightened? I don't know. Let us know in the chat. Brother Nasser, what are your thoughts? Yeah, this, this, is, this is, you know, since uh you know we've been working together and uh recently uh, consuming your content uh this is definitely a different side of you uh that uh is interesting it's an interesting side um i appreciate the growth yeah appreciate the that's growth. a euphemism guys that's a euphemism it's a euphemism for whatever you want it to be. But yes, thank you. Barakallahu feek. Thank you. Very respectful. Jazakallahu khairan. Look, look uh, I'm just trying to show brothers. Look, this the, the aim here is like to show brothers. Look, you got to have finesse. You got to have finesse. And so one of the ways is a way to articulate to your wife, to your sisters, to those uh, who, who you know, you work with that, look, there's a certain way to articulate um, when something is done that's problematic. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, the rah rah, right? The, you mean it doesn't have to be the tugs on the niqab and the pointing in the camera? Yeah, you got. We should go back and count how many fingers. Ooh, I, can can we have super chats? Can we get a super chat for every time that I actually pointed in the camera? Mashallah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Super chat for points and lean ins. You had a number of lean yeah. ins. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, that was that was like that was real. That was raw. But anyway, guys, let's wrap it up. It's been amazing. Jazakumallah khairan. We thank Allah for the growth. We thank Allah for the opportunity to 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 um, you know review uh, kind of the journey. Uh, and also thank Allah for the opportunity to continue to hopefully be of benefit to the people and maybe be of even more benefit to the people now. So thank but, you, Sister Zahra said it's been a very beneficial live. Before, yeah, before, before you stop, what do you think when you see old self and you? You're muted. Yeah, I... Um, like I said, it's, 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 you know, somebody mentioned in the chat that I've become more logical. And I think that's true. I think I have become more rational, more logical, um, able to be kind of to step back more. Um, I think that that was, that was obviously a very emotional moment. Um, and I was in my feelings, right? I was in my feelings. Um, it's not, this video is not the video where I talked about single moms. 
and divorcees and polygamy. We're going to react to that one next, guys, because that was the one that got people really mad, right? So, alhamdulillah, I, I think that, that it was hyperbolic. I think there were quite a few extremes that were put out there and made to seem like that's the norm, like that's what's happening everywhere, which is not helpful. Um, but uh, the, I still stand by a lot of what I said, especially in the extreme circumstances. And Jazakallah khairan, Brother Nasir, I actually just want to appreciate you because you being here with us has meant that we've been able to not just like have, you know, reactions to, to, to what was being said, but actually draw lessons and teaching and, and action points, you know, and practical mm -hmm. advice um, off the back of this. So it's, you know, it, it's a real gift. And I pray that, you know, whoever was listening benefited, inshallah. Uh, and our goal really is to, is to help, you know, individuals to master themselves and to learn how to show up in their relationships so that they can improve those relationships so that we can have, you know, more cohesive families, stronger families. You know, that's what we need at the end of the day, subhanAllah. So, yeah. Alhamdulillah. So, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Please, guys, make sure that you hit the, the like button on your way out. Hit the notification bell. And if you haven't signed up and you haven't subscribed to the channel, then I'm not sure exactly why not. We are on our way to 40,000 subscribers. Can you imagine? We were at 8,000 in December. We were at eight, guys. And by the end of December, we got to 10. And since December, from December to now, we've got another 30,000 people, mashallah, into this community. So let's get it to 40K. I'm very excited about that, inshallah. Next goal will be 50. But... We have another episode of Candid Conversations coming out tomorrow, inshallah. So look out for that. I think lots of you haven't seen the Candid Conversation uh, video. So go onto the channel, watch those, leave your comments, and let's keep the conversation going in the comments. And uh, we'll see you on the next one, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.